Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Brad Wind. Uh, I'm coming from you uh, from Berthoud uh, here at our headquarters building at Northern Water. Uh, thank you for taking the time today to learn more about uh, our portal uh, in which you can do your day-to-day uh, -day transfers and managing of your supplies that uh, originate from Northern Water. Um, we hope at this time that uh, you're all healthy, uh, your families are healthy, the organizations I'm sure are challenged like ours has been from time to time through these COVID times. Uh, we are open for business. Um, to many of us, if there's one silver lining in, in all that we've been through since in our case, uh, March 23rd here at Northern Water is, is recognizing that uh, in pretty short order, we were able to carry on uh, the important task that we find ourselves uh, having in Northeastern Colorado of delivering water. And um, uh, I'm sure you all have had similar challenges, but uh, thank goodness for technology, uh, like the technology we're using today to uh, uh, get us through these times. But um, most of our functions uh, are today as they historically have been at Northern Water. Um, here in, in Berthoud, probably about 80% of our staff, our office staff, are working remotely. Uh, and we're fortunate they can do their function for Northern Water from home and our field staff, uh, short of a week or a week and a half of taking a time out late in March, uh, have been back and making things happen, uh, helping reclamation, getting water collected on the West Slope, uh, delivered through the mountainside and uh, into Horse Juice and Carter and Boulder Reservoir uh, for ultimately uh, your use. Um, but nonetheless, challenging times. Um, but again, thank you for your time today. Uh, myself and Karen Rademacher uh, are gonna walk us through a, just a very uh, short snippet down memory lane that relates to both our, uh, our water accounting systems of the past as well as our websites of the past. And I, uh, time flies. Um, I didn't realize, I think we've had five or six generations of our website. I would not have guessed that, um, um, but uh, indeed that's the case. So Christy's running the slide deck here and like I said, Karen Rademacher, who is uh, director of our administration division here at Northern Water, uh, and which oversees several departments that are heavily involved in um, both our website uh, design as well as the, the portal development through our IT staff, and also the many uh, staff we have in water scheduling that you all are very familiar with and engage with them on a pretty regular basis. Um, so let's just walk through a few slides here. Uh, looking back, um, Again, Karen, jump in here. Uh, looking back to uh, early quota days of a, a transfer card from 1957. This is for the Laramie Well Canal, also known as the Eaton Canal. And uh, the math then is very similar to the math now. Um, I did have to look up uh, April 12th uh, was on a Friday. And uh, not long before our call today, I looked up to see if, in fact, that was a board meeting day, but it was not. It was actually the Friday before that in which the board deliberated on a 50 or a 60% quota. And they were down in the low quota numbers because the snowpack was abundant as the minutes suggested and uh, they ultimately settled on a 60% quota. So um, likely it took uh, a week or so to fill out these forms for all the various allottees uh, and account entities. And, and Brad, on that previous slide, I recognize the handwriting as that of Mr. J.M. Dilley, our first general manager. So I think he, he did a lot of this himself back in the day. Wow, well that explains why it would take a week. But uh, anyway, the numbers show that uh, Thurman Weld was uh, credited with uh, their quote allocation of just over 22,000 acre feet and it looks like they had some nearby canals in which transfers came into them. Um, it looks like there was a little correction of some kind. There was other water that came in from the city of Greeley and uh, they kind of start off their, their water year with a, an allocation of, of uh, just over 24,000 acre feet. So some things never change, but it's interesting to see that, that uh, history in writing. Next slide, Christy. Um, this is a, a monthly balance uh, in order to make sure your, your balance at the end of a month. Uh, they spend a lot of time on the typewriter, um, going account by account and making sure again that the, the system was balanced 
and that all the accounts added up to the total amount of quota for that those, year. Those of us who are old enough to remember taking typing classes, using the tab, setting your tab stops and typing this kind of thing was advanced typing, it was hard. Yes, and, and likely not on an electric typewriter. Right. Next slide, please. And then uh, 1981, um, uh, here at Northern Water, some of the uh, senior staff, those kind of long in the tooth, uh, remember our old green screen machines, uh, or what was called a data general, uh, was a computer system that was acquired in 1981 and really became our first um, computerized, if you will, water counting system and really tracking things very similarly as we do today. We have, I think, more creative programs, um, carryover, um, regional pool, those kinds of things that add more colors, if you will, to how we count for water. Uh, but the gist is uh, pretty much the same today as it was then. And then uh, uh, there, there was a lot of excitement around a computer. Um, I'm thinking to my years, I was uh, probably just entering high school in these years. And I remember similar excitement of seeing a computer, although I think it was a Apple IIe or something like that. Karen, what was your first computer? Oh, I believe it was an Apple back in 1983. Yeah. So uh, like us, they were excited about seeing a, a, a PC in high school, uh, the board was also excited um, to see their first acquisition of a computer system and they took a recess from a board meeting to actually go see the beast. Uh, then we step into um, our, our second generation, Gen 2 as we call it, of water accounting um, in 2001. Uh, again, offering similar functionality, not as much online functionality as certainly we have now, but certainly a, a portal in which you could see your account balances um, and how this much. This view is only available to the staff. Um, a lot of teas were calling in their water orders or using the card system to mail it in. I think Karen, it was about that time here at Northern Water where there was uh, a lot of discussion as to moving toward an online system. And there were some who had an opinion that you know people will never be uh, satisfied or desiring to go online to order water and why would we want to sink that investment into a tool um, but uh, life's changed and that's just not only do we want to get on a, a pc and do it but we want to do it uh, from our our smartphones as well so life continues to change and then uh, boy heavy heavy lift for northern water karen you were right in the middle of gen 3. and again this this view is what the staff would see um, internal to northern water Karen and I and a couple other staff at Northern Water looked high and low for uh, a product off the shelf, so to speak, to do that water accounting, uh, thinking that it's a, it's a tough lift to uh, continue to build these uh, programs internal. Uh, they take a lot of work and a lot of resources, and we were committed to buy something off the shelf and spent time in California and other places uh, going from water district to water district looking at how they, um, what systems they used. And uh, when it was all said and done, we found ourselves to be a little bit unique in the different kinds of waters that we allocate and particularly the programs we have that carry over from year to year um, that other systems just did not uh, have the functionality to uh, account for that water getting moved into the next year. And here we are in 2020 with uh, a new way to access your account through Northern Waters website. Karen, anything else to add here? No, I'm, I'm seeing some of this for the first time myself. Okay, well, this is exciting. Um, next, just to, at the same time, uh, we're, and, and partly why we're rolling out the portal now is because uh, here in the few business days, we're gonna be rolling out our new website and as I mentioned before, we've been through a lot of generations of websites. I can remember uh, I was leaving grad school in about 93, 94, and the hubbub was, oh gosh, there's this thing called email, and there's this thing called the internet, and there wasn't the a lot of web. The World Wide Web. The World Wide Web, and uh, it was hard to believe we'd be communicating so heavily through that kind of technology, but 
Uh, I was a little surprised, even though I've been here since 90 Fort Northern Water, that we kicked off that first website, Karen, in 1997. That's um, pr pretty uh, text heavy, would you say? <laughs> um, but we weren't too far behind the curve in 97, kicking things off. And then here you see kind of generations three and four. Um, the one on your right is our current website, which is going to go bye-bye here in another week. It served us well. Um, websites uh, got heavier and heavier, at least ours at Northern Water did. There's a lot of, a lot of things. There's a lot of text, um, a lot of commentary on our current website. And as I understand the industry, uh, people are wanting things a little bit lighter, uh, less cumbersome, um, access through iPhones, which kind of drives things to be a little bit simpler, at least in my mind. So here's a uh, homepage of uh, what you'll see here in a, in a couple weeks from Northern Water and how you will access the water portal. So that that's it, Karen. We're up to modern day uh, technology in terms of uh, both our website and our water accounting system. And uh, with that, uh, I'll turn over to Karen Aguilar. She's our department manager of our water scheduling department. And she's gonna introduce, first of all, her staff and also the staff within our IT department and uh, in our communications department as well. Welcome and thank you for attending our virtual tour of the new website and a deeper dive into the water accounting or now the water ordering system. I would like to introduce all of the panelists at this time and of which you've probably spoken to over the phone when you've ordered your water. Um, from the Water Scheduling Department, myself, Karen Aguilar. Um, we have Sarah Smith, and she'll give away. She's our Assistant Department Manager. We've got Kirk Tellinghusen, which is our lead water scheduler. We've got Lena Jones, who's our water scheduler. We've got our newest water scheduler, Luke Ryan. That is the water scheduling team. If you have talked to us on the phone or if you want to call or email us, that's what we look like. <laughs> um, from our communications department, we've got Christy Ritter, department manager. From our information technology department, um, we've got two developers online with us today. We've got Tad Osborne and Brandon Owensby. Today, as we go through the webinar, um, there might be questions that arise and at the bottom of your screen, you will see a button um, that you can click that says, says Q&A, looks like two little messages. You'll click on that, it'll bring up another box, a little dialog box for you to enter any questions. At the end of the webinar, we will go over all of these questions and answer them for you. Um, I am going to pass this back to Christy Ritter for a quick tour of the main website. Wonderful, thanks Karen. Um, so we're really excited about um, the new website that we are going to be launching, hopefully here in just a matter of a few days. Um, this website has actually been more than a year in, a in the making through a lot of development from various organizations and departments throughout Northern Water from IT, water scheduling, administration, you name it. Uh, we are also as part of our new website development and this new portal, we're also working on developing a new data portal that will be a part of our new website launch, um, which will also come online with all of this um, in the coming days. So the ultimate goal really for the new website was to be able to create a user-friendly experience with improved navigation and functionality for on all devices. Um, we're excited to finally take that functionality to the next level and be able to share a website that um, creates unique features and content that tells the story of Northern Water and what we do in our organization. Key features that you will see is improved navigation throughout the site, ways for you to move around and find the most um, ways that you can get into content um, areas of the website, details about who we are, a full news blog that we'll, we'll be keeping up to date with the latest on project updates, um, new programs coming on board, um, updates to the water accounting portal. Um, so that we're excited about that. That news will be able to um, just share a little bit of a snapshot of what's going on here at Northern. 
Um, and then the details too about our proposed projects. Many of you are um, a part or know of our projects. Um, so we'll be able to keep updated information on our website going forward. So I think that kind of gives a little bit of a, a glimpse there, but really what we're here to show today is a little bit more of the water accounting portal, which is actually right here available on the homepage, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that over to Karen right now. And Karen's going to share a little bit more of how, we, how you will access the new portal. All right. So we sent the notice of this webinar to everybody that's a listed authorized contact for any various municipal and ditch accounts. The email address that was tied to the ditch and municipal accounts is the account, oh, is the account that we want you to use in order to create a new account. That way it's linked with Northern Waters information. Keep in mind that this water order screen is for those that have already been using the water order screen or something we call web portal. Um, if you were calling water scheduling on the east slope, you can use this. But if you were actually calling the west slope or our west slope operators in, in the far pump plant for your pipeline orders, please continue to do so. Do not use this website. From the main website, you will navigate to um, a, a page called Your Water Account. You can do this in two ways. One, you can click on the little drippy faucet picture, or you can go to Your Water and then scroll down to Your Water Account. Once you get to Your Water Account, for the very first time, everybody will have to create an account, even if you've had one before. Go ahead and click on create an account, fill in your personal information, and the email that is linked with Northern Water. The password will need to be set up with at least 10 characters and have three of four character types, lowercase, uppercase, numerical, or special. This is a new feature uh, for our password security. Once you click on create an account, it does nothing. I'm just kidding. It actually sends you a verification email to the email address that you created the account with. We're going to show you what that looks like. The reason we wanted to do this is so that we can authenticate the email address is you. Once you've opened that email, there will be a link in there. You click on that link and it has verified that it is created under the, cor the correct email address. Go ahead and click login. You'll have to put in your email and password again. And click login to get to any accounts that you are linked with. If we go back to that screen, you can also go to the forget your password section. Again, this will do kind of the same thing. You'll plug in your email address, you'll hit reset your password. It will send um, an authentication email to the email address that's linked with Northern Water. You'll click on that, redo your password, and you'll be able to reset your own password. I'm going to switch over to Sarah so that she can get into the different features of the web portal once you're in. All right, thank you, Karen. I, uh, all right, so now I have changed my password. I'll go ahead and log in again and go through some of the features. On the new um, web portal. Um, I wanted to start with just a very brief overview of some of the vocabulary that we frequently use. Um, we say account to mean a couple of different things and I wanted to, to just uh, um, clarify uh, some, of the, some of that vocabulary. Um, we frequently, we have a term that we use frequently called account entity and that might be a ditch company, 
It could be a municipality that has um, units of CBT. And it's really any account that gets water, CBT water certified to that account. And um, that's kind of analogous to this top, um, uh, the, the, the um, pull down in the top left corner. Um, you could have an ABC dish company or we've created another um, account entity called XYZ Incorporated. And each one of those account entities can have one or multiple people authorized under to act on behalf of that account entity. Um, it can have a quota person, which is what we consider the primary uh, um, contact for water scheduling. Um, they're the one that's authorized to add additional people or to uh, change the contact information. Um, and then they can also authorize what another individual might be authorized to do, whether it's create an order or create a transfer. And each of those individuals will need to set up a web account. And that's kind of that exercise that Karen just walked through. Um, so I just wanted to go through uh, quickly some of the details on our on the new website. Um, and then once an individual registers, there's many people will just be authorized for one account entity. There are several individuals that may be a ditch rider that um, runs water on several ditch companies. And so if he's authorized on more than one ditch company, uh, each of those ditch companies would show up here. And so in this instance, I'm authorized on ABC Ditch Company and XYZ Water Company. And so you can just flip through uh, the different accounts and, and make transactions for that account. Um, so you'll see on the, the first landing page you come to is the account details. And there's this a button called manage authorized users and that will allow the person to um, let me click on it and they can authorize each of those individuals to make various transactions. So under this XYZ company, Karen Aguilar can make orders and she can make transfers and then Kurt can make transfers on behalf of this company. Um, if I switch to ABC Ditch Company, I'm not the primary, the quota contact. So I do not have that button right here. Somebody else on that account is the primary and they would have to make those changes. Um, but if you are the quota contact, then you will have this button and you can make those changes. And so if I wanted right now, Kirk can only make transfers, he can't make orders. But if I wanted to allow him to do both, I would just hit this edit button and check the box. And I want him to be able to do orders and click save. And so then that will go back into our database and adjust our system and he'll now be authorized to make orders and transfers. Um, the other option I wanted to point out was on this far right corner, there's a pull down and this is where you can edit your contact information. So this would just be my, my contact information if I wanted to change addresses or add another phone number uh, to be contacted and I can do that. And it's probably advisable when you first create your account, just go through and make sure that we have the correct information on file for you. If you have any changes and then just hit save and those changes will go through. So I'm going to hand it over to Kirk now. He'll talk about the um, green buttons listed here. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Sarah. Um, so like, uh, like Sarah mentioned, um, this is sort of the landing page for um, after, you, after you type in your login information, your, your username and password, which now is gonna be your email address um, for, your, for your username. Um, this, is, this is the page that you're gonna land on. This is kind of just your overview of your account. Uh, it shows the different balances that you have um, for each water source um, available to you within that account. So XYZ Water Incorporated has all of those um, water sources available um, that you see there that, that actually have a balance in, I should say. Um, so this is, like I said, this is sort of your landing page. Um, this is a main overview. If you are, if you do have a current um, order running, it's gonna show up in that far right column where it says flow rate. Uh, so in this example, um, you know, it's going to, sh it's showing that your current flow is 20 CFS of carryover water. Um, so that's kind of just uh, how that operates, how that looks. We're going to click on the, 
next uh, tab over to the right called orders. So on this tab, you're going to see a, a table like this that shows your order history. Um, it's, it's sort of just a, a, a way for you to see previous orders, to see um, a history of your orders, and you can sort it um, based on water source. If you click the, um, on the drop down menu there, you're able to select individual water sources and sort of look at your, your uh, order history based on that water source. And also down below, within the table itself, if we click back onto CBT, and we just leave it at current water year for now, um, you're, you're able to sort these columns based on date or based on the type of order and based on the delivery point. Um, for instance, you know, if you had multiple delivery points for the same account entity, um, and you wanted to sort only for St. Vrain River delivery point, um, you're able to do that here. Um, and then also in the, the drop down box up above, I believe the default is to show the most recent orders uh, first at the top, but you're able to, like I said, sort of toggle that uh, on and off to sort one way or the other. The, the other way is you can, um, set your date range. Um, the default is to current water year, but you can select um, previous water year or you can set up a custom, uh, a custom date range uh, in there as well. So that being said, we are going to, we're just going to go through and create an order. So you just click on the create order box. And just a reminder that even with the new website and the new web portal here, um, web orders are still, um, our cutoff time has not changed. That cutoff time to receive a web order to us is still 2.30 p.m. to get a water order for the next day. So in this example, we're just gonna, um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click our water source in the drop down. And yeah, let's just select carryover. And next we'll select our delivery point. We'll select Big Thompson delivery point. The next one down is the date that we want that order to start. So we'll select our date. The effective time um, is basically a default time um, for that delivery point. So um, unless you're on the north end of our system, um, your default uh, delivery or your default um, change time is, is gonna be tied to whatever delivery point that is. So for the, in this example, for the Big T River um, delivery point, that, that time will always be 7 a.m. So we'll select that. And, and I did mention, so on the north end, if you choose your delivery points, um, you will probably have the option to select an individual time um, between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Below that, you're going to see um, a previous flow value. Uh, that is telling you basically what your current flow is. If you have an order that's that's already running. Uh, in this example, we have an order for 20 CFS to the Big Thompson delivery point of carryover water. So that's what that 20 is showing you. Then we'll type in below that what our new flow is and say we want to go down to 10 CFS uh, for tomorrow at 7 a.m. So we'll put that in there. This next step, um, what this does where it says include stop order, is basically what this will do is if you have a set number of days or a set period that you know or you know when you want to turn your water order off, you can check this box and type in the date and time that you want that to end. And what this will do is create two separate orders, 
one order for your 10 CFS to start, <clears throat> another order for your order to go to zero on August 4th at 7 a.m. Below that, you will see a couple questions. Um, <clears throat> The first one is just, is this water going to be, is this order going to be delivered to into storage? <clears throat> if not, you just check no, and then you're done. If it is, um, then it's going to ask you for a couple other um, details there. So if it is going to be um, an order that's going to storage, you just put in how much is going to storage and what reservoir that's going to. Below that is another um, question for industrial use. And basically, um, this is just a question that is this, is any portion of this order going to be um, used for industrial purposes? And if so, we ask that you provide. Um, either an API number, if it's for an oil and gas well, um, or a GPS location um, for that industrial use. The, the, the last box on the bottom you'll see is just for any sort of comments that you wanna put on this order that <clears throat> maybe you weren't able to answer with any of the questions above. Then we're gonna hit submit order. And now, now this brings us back to that order, that main orders page. <clears throat> now what you see here is your order history, that table has dropped down a little ways. And up at the top, you're gonna to see another table that shows pending orders. At this time, what you're seeing is those two orders on that previous screen that are pending approval by Northern Water by the Water Scheduling Department. So when you see pending approval, that means that your water order has been submitted online successfully, but it has not been viewed or seen by water scheduling. So it has not been approved and put in our system in the background. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna have somebody on the back side of things approve this order, and then we're gonna refresh our screen to see what that looks like. Now, what has been done is in the background, the water scheduling department has approved the first order for 10 CFS. And you'll see that that status has changed from pending approval to pending. Basically what that means is it's been approved by us, but it's still pending because the order hasn't taken place yet. It's the order is for tomorrow. So it's not currently running yet. Um, and then, you know, if, if we were to approve that stop order, that would also change to pending. So that's just kind of a way for you guys to tell the status of what your, your web order is. Next, we're gonna go to the next box, the next green box on the right there um, called transfers. And this, um, this screen is very similar to the water order screen. Um, it shows you uh, a, a table there that shows transfer history. Um, you have similar sort of functionality on here. Um, you can change your options from uh, your water source there. And then you can also change um, whether it was an incoming transfer or an outgoing transfer. <clears throat> Just a way to kind of sort through them there. Um, and similar to the orders page where um, you can select current water year or previous water year or custom. Yeah, so we'll just kind of go through um, a transfer here. We're just gonna hit create transfer. <clears throat> and for this one, we're gonna select seasonal transfer, which um, 
is the majority of what um, you folks are going to be um, putting in. So in that drop down, we'll just select seasonal. There are a couple other transfer types on there. Um, one is from CBT to collateral, and that's for creating windy gap in lieu water. Uh, the other one is for uh, carryover capacity transfer, which is basically just a transfer of your bucket, if you will, or your, um, your carryover capacity to a different entity. <clears throat> so for this one, we'll select seasonal. Um, below, we're going to select our account, which it's already on XYZ Water Incorporated. We'll select the water source, which is, we'll use CBT. Below that is um, the account to transfer to. Uh, we're just going to use ABC Ditch Company. And then if you want to include uh, an individual to transfer to, you can. Um, this is not a required um, uh, field, but uh, the more information, the better. And then obviously the water source too will remain CBT. The amount in acre feet, so we'll just put in 50. And then any, like I said, any comments um, that you'd like to include um, that pertain to this particular transfer. And then we'll just hit submit. And again, sort of like the order screen, we'll see that pop up under pending transfers. Um, and then that just gives you a way to, to see that, um, you know, this order has been, has been put in. Um, it's, it's still pending approval on our end. Um, And let's see. We will next go to the farthest green box on the right there called documents. <clears throat> and this is just where you can um, view any of the uh, important documents that pertain to your particular account. Um, things like quota allocation reports, um, a contact list for authorized people on the account, um, carryover declaration forms, um, windy gap status reports, if, if that's applicable to your particular uh, account, CCTP notifications, things like that um, is, and this is the area where you will, where you will find that. And that being said, um, I think that pretty much covers what I was going to talk about today. Um, well, this is this is an example of the the contacts list that you'll see um, under your documents there. So I think, um, like I said, I think that pretty much covers what I was going to talk about today. Um, I hope that this is very um, user friendly for you all. Um, I think it will be. I think it's got a lot of uh, mobile capacity so that you can use it on your device. Um, and we'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Kirk. I'll just wrap up with a few things here before we take some questions and answers. Um, hopefully this was a helpful webinar for you to be able to see a new uh, tour of the new portal. Um, we are recording today's webinar and we'll send it out uh, via email um, through the same invite list that you received the invite from. Um, we'll also be posting it on the new website in our news blog. Um, so it will be there available as a reference in case you need to refer back to it. Um, moving forward on the day that we go live with the new website, um, all water account entities will receive an email um, very early in the morning that we go live with just detailed instructions of how to set up your new account and get that auth authentication um, achieved so that you can get in and continue forward moving with um, the water orders and transfers that you need to do as a, a water user. 
Um, hopefully it will be an easy setup for you, but know that this entire team here that you see before you will be available for questions. Um, at the end of this, we'll pop up a slide just with some email contact information and a phone number. Um, but before we do that, we wanted to go ahead and entertain some uh, questions. Um, and while we've been going through, we've had a few people pop in some questions on to the Q&A, which is at the very bottom of your um, Zoom webinar. So I'm going to just ask a few of these, and I think these will all be directed at the water scheduling team. Um, the first one we have, the question is, will each authorized user know from their login who the main contact is for their account? So there is one contact on each and every account that is listed as a quota or primary contact for water scheduling. And I don't know that that is something that is that you'll be able to get to really easy. Um, you can call us. It is usually the person um, that gets all of the quota letters. It's the person that um, any kind of formal um, correspondence would go to this person. Um, it is usually, you know, the ditch president. Sometimes it's an attorney. Um, so yeah, you can call water scheduling and find out if that's something you need. And I think it's also on that contact list that that we had, that, that contact document. It was the very last one we showed. And I can bring that up again. That would be great. If you would like. Let's see. I should have shut that screen down. While Sarah's bringing that up for us, if you have a question, feel free to put that into the Q&A at the bottom. We have a few more in there that we'll answer here as soon as Sarah's able to just share that document with us again, just for your reference. I'm sorry, I thought I was sharing it earlier, I'm sorry. I So I pulled up that same um, contact document that Kirk showed uh, or talked about just a few minutes ago. And so when you pull that up, it says, it has right here, Sarah Smith, and I'm authorized for a quota. And that's that primary contact that can make those changes. It'll be the person with all the X's. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Um, next question, and this is probably for Karen or Sarah as well, is how much order history will be available online under customer date? And I'm gonna have to say when Gen 3 or Gen 2 was alive, right? About 2016? I think it's the 2016 water years when Gen 3 started. Yeah. So about four years of order history available. Yep. Um, this question may be for Brandon. Uh, will the website remember our 10 digit password? You're on mute, Brandon. No, it will not. Most browsers, though, do have the capability of doing that for you, but the website itself will not. Sounds good. Um, another question is, will our old contacts and approved users transfer over? Yes. So if there is a current pending transfer out there today, when we go live, it'll still be pending that when it's live when the new website's live. Sounds good. Uh, another question that we had come in is, should we still email the water scheduling team for monthly, daily accounting splits? For example, Windy Gap, CBT. So that is, um, that has to do with the pipeline. And yes, we are still taking that information on how to do the splits on the pipeline. Sounds good. Any other questions from attendees? I'm
I'm going to go ahead then here really quickly and just share my screen with some contact information. Sorry, it's not, there it is. Everybody see that contact information up on the screen then? So this is the um, both the water scheduling and the communications email. Um, so as we go forward uh, with launching this new website here, hopefully in the, in the coming week, um, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to utilize either one of these emails. Um, our 1-800 number is also listed there on the screen for your use. Um, we'll have several people around, both from Water Scheduling Communications as well as our IT team. Um, so if there is anything um, technology related that we need to get further um, assistance with, they'll be helping us out with that as well. So I think that concludes today's webinar and thank you all for attending. We appreciate your time this afternoon to take a glimpse at our new website coming very soon. <laughs>